Hey there! Today we'll have a look at an interesting pen. The pen was launched through Kickstarter, it was purchased by John, John sent it to me, and I'm going to review it. And this is the pen, okay? Wink pens, I'm going to refer to it as the Wink pen. Um, it's an interesting pen because it has a glass nib, you're supposed to be able to put pretty much any liquid you want in there, and then you can write with that, so it's interesting for calligraphers and people like that. Uh, I don't have a price because it was a Kickstarter project, you cannot run to your local fountain pen store, if you want information on where to buy it, go to the Kickstarter page and look it up. Okay, what do you get when you buy it? You get this box, and this is a nice box. It has a cardboard outer sleeve, and this sleeve is actually useful. Not only does it have the logo of the pen on there, but it also has the pen parts, has care and maintenance instructions, instructions on how to disassemble it, so useful. There's a box, feels, I don't know, like a very smooth cardboard, kind of nice magnetic closure and a little soft uh, thing to, to put the pen in of course with a glass nib you want to be a little careful so you can put the pen in there and you have some more uh, instructions and a certificate of authenticity uh, which is also nice uh, because this was the first production run hence that it even comes with a sort of silky feeling cloth which has the wink pen logo on it I think that's a that's a nice addition and of course it comes with the actual pen. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then do a writing sample. Top of the pen, finial, you have the Wink logo. We have a clip. The clip is folded metal and I'm pretty sure I can bend that out of shape, but it does what it's supposed to do and it's not too tight. We have the cap then we have the barrel. This is a converter that is built in, so to speak, and is connected to this turning knob. Uh, so you can ink up the pen by turning that uh, uh, turning knob. And as you can see, uh, there was some blue ink in this, so uh, hence the traces of the ink. The cap unscrews, and then you have the glass nib. Now, glass nibs you may have seen on the, the so it's like something like the Gerbin dip nibs. Uh, it's simple, it works like this. Uh, according to uh, Richard Binder on his website, the, re the, the way to make this is to take various tubes of glass, they heat it up and they sort of pull it out and, and twist it when it's hot, I think. And that's how you get these grooves. And those grooves, of, co grooves of course, are interesting because ink flows through that from a reservoir or because you have dipped it the ink slowly makes its way past the grooves to the tip and you can write and the nice thing about that even with a dip pen uh, is that you can typically uh, write for a bit longer than you can with a standard dip nib that doesn't have an ink reservoir because the ink slowly trickles down those grooves so that's very nice you can disassemble the pen you have a clear barrel you have a section that tapers down it's all very fine very narrow and it's quite a long pen. It's, it's something like a, a regular pencil, a wooden pencil, I would say. And then you have your uh, wink pen with your special glass nib. Okay, uh, can you post the pen for those of you who really want to do that? Not really. That doesn't really work, but as I said, it's, it's very long to begin with. What do I like about this pen and what do I not like about this pen? Well, I think it's an interesting concept. It's not a new concept. Uh, this is the Trio A1 pen. I really did my best to find more information about it, but it's it's a bit of an elusive brand. I've reviewed this quite a while ago. Um, the Crescent Filler, as you can see, fountain pen with a glass nib, just like the Wink pen. So in that regard, there's nothing new under the sun, but the Wink pen does add things that the Trio pen doesn't have. First of all, Assuming that everything, everything goes well with that Kickstarter project, these will be a bit more widely available. The trio pens are not always easy to find. Secondly, something like this being a crescent filler means there's a rubber or latex sack in there and you cannot put any writing liquid in that. Even some inks, commercially available inks, have been known to just make those sacks dissolve. Um, and this has a converter. That means it's easy to clean, there are no rubber parts, even the, the, um, s uh, the, the piston seal of the converter is plastic. So you can put a lot of stuff in here. That's all very nice. I, I, it's, it's an interesting design. It feels like a, um, 
a design pen, if you know what I mean. It's it's a modern, it's clean looking, it is some metal and, and um, uh, transparent stuff, so it looks a bit industrial, and I know that a lot of people like that. So in that regard, I think they, they definitely did something that's nice. Things I don't like about it so much. Obviously a very interesting concept to, to create something that you can put other stuff in. Wine, beer, tea, coffee, heaven knows what. Uh, of course that's interesting, of course, because especially for artists it gives you a whole range of liquids to work with. Question is, why would you want to do that if there is a whole range of inks readily available in pretty much any colour you can wish for, in pretty much any water resistance you can wish for, is it really necessary to have a pen that you can dedicate to write with beer, for example? An issue with those kinds of things, because of course I've experimented with these sorts of things, not necessarily with this pen, but in the past too, with dip nibs, other stuff, is that most liquids don't really show up legibly on the paper. So it's a nice idea to come up with something like tea and then write with it, but at the end of the day, quite often, you can't read back what you wrote. Because it's a liquid, it discolors very quickly, it fades very quickly, or it's just so light that you can't really see it. Nevertheless, of course, part of the fun of a pen like this is playing with it. And playing around, and I do see how people uh, do calligraphy and are interested in using weird inks, or maybe using waterproof inks, and then using this for calligraphy purposes. Of course, it's a glass nib, and it's it works just like a round fountain pen tip, so it's not an italic. That means that a lot of calligraphy styles cannot really be done with this. Unless you start to file things off yourself, and it being glass, you could do that. Uh, uh, two more things I'd like to say. It is a glass nib, and of course that's part of the fun here. There is no feed. The, the nib functions as its own feed because of the grooves. Uh, that's an advantage. A disadvantage is that, of course, it is glass, and glass will break. I have had glass dip pens, and I, if I sometimes I dip them in a bottle of ink, I gently tap them on the side of the bottle, and glass already breaks off. It's fragile material. It's quite thin. That's something that can happen. Now you can take some very fine micro mesh. I, I happen to have some uh, some here. Uh, you can use something like that and just kind of polish the uh, the nib, and it will start to write again. But you have to be a bit careful. It is a fragile item. Finally, the overall construction of the pen is okay, um, but it's not the sturdiest design I've ever seen. It, it feels a bit flimsy to me, uh, and you notice that, uh, for example, here uh, at the, the connecting point between the barrel and the section, you see there is a bit of a gap right there where my nail is. Um, and everything moves a bit. It's just not really rock solid. Having said that, I mean, you also have to bear in mind this is the first production run of these pens. Uh, give wing pens some time, and for all we know, they're going to come up with something radically different, maybe sturdier, maybe metal. Who knows? I don't know what's in the future there. In all, a fun pen. You need to see how it writes. That's what we're going to do next. John, thank you for lending me this pen. I'll uh, do a writing sample with it and send it back to you. I hope this was useful so far. Measurements of the pen as well as some high resolution pictures will be on the website sbrebrown.com. Let's do a writing sample and um, I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Wink pen. Now, this nib is cut at a slanted angle, so depending on how you oriented it, uh, you can get some pretty fine writing. Uh, I would say from over boxes. Hmm? Um, I, I would say this is already quite broad. This is uh, a fountain pen broad, I would say. Now, if you put the really broad side out with the really broad side, then you get a very broad. This is more than double broad. This is something like, I don't know, quadruple broad or something. Um, so you can really do that. Now the ink is just Pelican Blue. It's it's nothing fancy. I, I'm also not going to write with one million different liquids in this review. Um, but, I mean, you, you could. And um, uh, Gourmet Pens has done so. So you can always check out her review of the uh, pen. Um, I... I like the way it writes. As far as glass nibs go, I have definitely had scratchier ones. 
Uh, of course, using the thinner side will make it a little scratchier than when you're using the very broad side, uh, just because it's very pointy. But I can definitely see how you could play around with this uh, as a calligrapher. So, um, I, I think it's an interesting design. And I think you can definitely do some fun stuff with this. Um, one thing I wanted to add though, you can see the flow is very well. It, 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 it does keep up well uh, as you might expect. So I do like all that. Now one thing I wanted to add was that I, I had missed uh, this uh, uh, slip. I'm just going to cover up the address here. But I, as I mentioned before, I wasn't sure about the price, but there actually was a, a packing slip in this. Now, $149, um, I, I find that a little steep for this, given the, the, the tolerances, um, you know, it's all a bit, I don't want to use the word rickety, but I mean, it's, it's there's some, some gaps. Um, I definitely think that this could be developed further, and I do find $150 quite expensive for, for this. But, of course, uh, it's always up to the uh, user to decide whether that's worth it or not. Um, guys, thanks a lot to uh, John uh, for having this pen sent over to me. I appreciate it. Thank you, John. Um, hope this was useful. And I'll gladly see you later.